My name is Paige LeBlanc and I'm here with Nancy Bird and today we are going to be talking about organ and tissue donation and transplantation. So Nancy, can you tell me your connection to organ and tissue donation? Uh, yes, so my late husband had a liver transplant 13 years ago and he's deceased for three years but it has nothing to do with the transplant so just want to make that very clear. <laughs> but he just it was an unknown cause of his liver failure. He traveled the world for his job and in July of 2004 he came down with hepatitis, like a rare strain of hepatitis. They couldn't quite figure out like what it was. Mm -hmm. But by November of that year he was really doing bad like in complete liver failure. And so they did a biopsy of his liver and determined that he needed a liver transplant as soon as possible. So he immediately got on the transplant list and by early December, he was really, really sick, bleeding internally. And our kids were three and six at the time. So he was hospitalized and he basically was in dire need of a liver. Yeah. And right before Christmas, he got it. So Aww. December 19th, we got our Christmas miracle. He received his liver transplant, and that began the road to recovery for him. But it was like a switch went on. I mean, he was, you know, remarkably improved. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were happy to have him back home. And um, he went back to work six months later, and it changed his whole perspective on life. Yeah. He just became a determined athlete, and we went out to the transplant games in 2008 to Pittsburgh. We brought the kids out, and he participated in the cycling leg of the transplant games. And then in 2010, we went out to Madison, Wisconsin for the games again, and he participated in even more competitions. And so it was really part of our life. In the meantime, backing up a little, so about two years after his transplant, we both started volunteering here at the Sharing Network. Mm -hmm. And we would do street fairs and 4-H clubs, you know, we'd bring the kids and we, you know, it was like the four of us were, you know, yeah. giving out green bracelets and telling our story. And, you know, David did a lot of speaking engagements and we'd go to hospitals and businesses, whatever. Whatever they needed us to do, yeah. we were doing it. And then when the Sharing Network moved to this location in New Providence, I started volunteering in the office mm -hmm. and worked for Family Services. Mm -hmm. And then in 2012, David decided that he wanted to run a marathon. And this was someone who, like, prior to his transplant, wasn't really all that athletic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, like, quite a dream oh to God. run a marathon. And at the same time, I became a per diem employee here. Mm -hmm. So again, very much a part of our life, yeah. you know, organ donation. Yeah. And then he completed the marathon. He wanted to do the New York City Marathon, but that year it was canceled. But he was ready and he did one anyway. And then he trained again and he completed the marathon in 2013, the New wow. York City Marathon. So I, I don't know, he's probably not the, you know, first liver <laughs> transplant recipient to do it, but it was pretty, you know, we were pretty proud. Yeah. So that's, you know, then I started working here full time this past December, but I had been pretty up until then. Yeah. So um, what was your life like before he received the transplant? Um, life was fine. I mean, he was only sick from, you know, really for six months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we traveled a lot. The kids were little, you know, just a typical family. So it was once he got sick that you know, the kids were so little and it was hard for me as the caregiver for both the kids and for him yeah. to be in two places at once. But, yeah. um, you know, that was that six months was difficult. Yeah. How much did you know about organ and tissue donation before all this had happened? Um, we knew about it. His brother actually predeceased him and could have been an organ donor. And unfortunately, another family member made the decision without consulting the whole family mm -hmm. that that wasn't what would happen. But um, we all agreed that that would have been a remarkable gift had he 
you know. Yeah. Had the family said yes, but um, so we were we were aware and. Yeah. How had um, it changed your lives after he had received the transplant? Well, it changed everything. And, you know, one of the things that, that my husband used to say is transplants don't just save the recipient, they save families. Yeah. And because it affects the whole family. Yeah. And, you know, obviously it affects the person who received the transplant the most. But, you know, we were incredibly grateful to have another 10 years. Yeah. With my husband. Yeah. Had you ever reached out or met the donor family before? My husband wrote a letter every single year. So his transplant was December 19th, and it mm -hmm. was right around the Christmas holidays. And um, he was cognizant of the fact that, you know, someone lost a loved one. And he knows that his donor was a woman in her 50s. We didn't know how she died or whether she was a mother or you know, yeah. a wife, a sister, you know, whatever. We didn't know any of that. But he chose to write his letter in January after the new year. And he did mm -hmm. it almost like religiously, like right after the new year, he would write a letter mm -hmm. to his donor family mm -hmm. and let them know just how important it was, you know, how, how much he treasured and valued the gift. So he, he did that every year. And in fact, before he died, that was one of the last things that he did yeah. was write the letter to his donor family. Yeah. So, I know that you participate in a lot of things with the New Jersey Sharing Network. So, what other ways do you spread the awareness of organ donation besides like the walks that I met you at before? At this point, that's primarily what I'm doing. The, yeah, the walks. Um, David used to wear two green bracelets, always two, and would always give one away. You know, when that yeah. conversation came up, he would always give one of his green bracelets away. So we had a, we had a stash of the green bracelets. Yes. <laughs> and I know that your team name is David's Flock. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit how you came up with that name? Yeah, so when David was first sick, again, you know, it was a precarious situation and the kids were little. And my community basically wrapped us in love and helped me create the Save David Foundation. And that was to help support me and the kids if things didn't go well. Yeah. Well, it did go well. And then we used the funds for Save David Foundation to raise awareness for organ donation. Mm -hmm. And we, as our own little entity, before we even connected with the sharing network, we were going to street fairs. And we were raised, you know, we yeah. like I got materials from sharing network, but now they've changed their whole model and families like mine could almost incorporate with the sharing network. But this was before all that happened. So when they started the first 5K here, we had a team that was Save David. And David used to say, you know, I've been saved, but there's so many Davids out there that need, you know, our help and to raise awareness and such. So we were Save David for many, many years. And then after my husband died, it was just too awkward to have that name. Yeah. So I changed the name to David's Flock. With the last name of Bird, it kind of oh. seemed like a good <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, throughout this whole journey, what have you been most grateful for? Oh, just that second chance of life. I mean, that, you know, there's nothing bigger than that, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's remarkable yeah. how it just truly saves your life and those around you, your families. Yeah. Aside from raising awareness, is there any other way you give back? By being here and just doing the best job I can here. It's good for me to be here because, you know, it's just sort of a constant reminder and a, a, a good memory. And my husband has a butterfly on the landscape of life. Oh, wow, really? So it's kind of nice to, yeah. you know, see yeah. that daily. Yeah. So what would you say to someone who isn't sure if they want to sign up as an organ donor? I would say that there's no risk in signing up as an organ donor. And if you had an opportunity to help someone, to make someone's life better, to save a life, wouldn't you want to do that? Yeah. 
All right. Well, thank you so much, Nancy, You're for coming in and sharing your story. I really appreciate oh, it. God. And I, I hope that your story inspires more people to sign up as an organ donor and check the box. So thank you so much for yeah, coming Yeah, well, good luck. It's a great project. Thank and you.